Oasis. What up? How you doing? You doing good? I know there are some rooms that actually told me, yeah, doing good, and some rooms that just stared at the TV screen. Either way, I hope you're doing well. Uh, my name's Shanna. <laughs> just wanted to come to you with a few announcements here. First of all, missions trips are upon us. One of the greatest week of the entire summer is Hope Week. I firmly believe that. This is one of my favorite things that we do here at Woodside Students. And registration is opening up at the end of April for you guys. So do not wait because there is a limited capacity for this trip. We're staying at Rochester College if you've never been on Hope Week before. And we locally serve the Metro Detroit area. It's an amazing week. We have teaching, we have worship, we have community, we have a lot of fun, we eat a lot of food. It's great. We learn a lot about Jesus and it's awesome. You wanna be there, I want you there. So don't wait to sign up. <laughs> the other thing that I have to announce to you is that we will not have Oasis next week. I know, oh, wow. But it's because of spring break. Some of you have spring break this week. Some of you have spring break next week. We chose next week. So <laughs> we will be off next week. Please do not come to the building because we will not be here to let you in and you will just have to awkwardly stand outside. Yeah. So don't do it. Just don't come. Please remember, don't come next week. But come back on April 14th because that's when we will be back and it will be awesome. We'll be kicking off a brand new series. So don't want to miss it. Would love to have you there. Uh, enjoy this very last week of our current series on the surface where we're wrapping up our look at the life of David. When we come back from the spring break, we'll have a brand new series for you. Can't wait. Have a great discussion. Have a great small group. See you later. What's up everyone? I'm so glad that you were able to tune in tonight. My name is Stephanie Hardy and we are finishing up our series on the surface. The past few weeks, we have been looking at different significant moments in the life of David. These moments have shown us David at his best and also his worst. But what we know is that David was chosen by God, a shepherd boy to be the next king of Israel, even though on the surface, he didn't have the appearance of a king. We saw how he bravely walked into battle with Goliath because of the faith he had in God. We saw him completely unashamed, dancing and praising to the Lord because he knew that he was living for an audience of one. On the surface, he may have looked like a fool, but he was willing to be goofy, foolish, and undignified to those around him if it meant only that he was honoring the Lord. We also saw him sin and make a huge mistake, but his response to that failure showed us repentance. He changed his mind and his heart and asked for forgiveness. We can learn many lessons from David's life. Ultimately, he was a man, a person, just like us seeking to become more like his creator. As we wrap up this series, I want you to think about this question. If you could be known for anything, what would it be? And what should we be known for? Our minds make instant connections when we think of people. Like if I say someone like LeBron James, you immediately think about amazing basketball player. If I say Ninja, you think of the incredible video gamer and YouTube star. There's so many different names that can come to mind that you could even think of. And when you say it out loud, you think of these characteristics. You don't have to answer this question out loud, but what comes to mind when I say your dad? Do you know him as a hard worker? Some, some of you um, may know him as a lover or a protector of your heart. Or maybe, of you, maybe some of you guys think of him as a bum who left your family. What about when I say your best friend? Who comes to mind? What do you want to be known for? The truth is, is that we all want to be known for something. Whether it's good or bad, we all have a reputation we are known for. The same thing goes for David. Throughout his life, he was known for a lot of different things, both good and bad. 
As we have seen over this series, he was known for bravery and confidence and a heart after God. He was also known for his sin, but also for his re response to that mistake and how God redeemed him. When it comes to the end of your life, what is it that you want people to know about you? Is it how well you did in school, how many friends you have, or how much money and stuff you gained? What about the idea of having thousands of followers on TikTok or Instagram? Or is it how you have loved God and loved all the people in your life? So I want to just take a moment and I want you guys to pause and think about this. What do you want to be known for? We see today that David's life is coming to an end and he wanted to be known for one thing and he wanted to pass it down to his son Solomon, the next king of Israel. So let's look at 1 Kings 2, 1 through 3. Go ahead and grab your Bible if you have it. And I'm just going to pick up in verse 1. It says, When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. So what we see in this text is that David is about to pass off the throne to his son. I'm sure that there was a lot that Solomon needed to know before this happened. After all, he was about to be running an entire nation. And we see that there are many things that need to happen in order to do so. He may need to figure out finances, how to be a leader, 
going through international relations, how to run the kingdom, things that on the surface seem like they are the most important things to being a good king. Solomon doesn't have a lot of time left with his dad, but he doesn't need it because David covers how to be a wise and good king in a few sentences. And really at the heart of what David shares to his son is this, being a successful king means having a true, open, and honest relationship with God. Let me repeat that, that being a successful king means having a true, open, and honest relationship with God. First, David says, find your strength in the Lord. David's advice is be strong and show yourself a man. While this is a specific address from a father to a son, David's wisdom is good for everyone regardless of male or female. And here, he's not talking about strength on the surface with muscles and a nice physique. That's not what he means by being a man. David's talking about inner strength rooted firmly in the Lord. Not your own abilities, skills, or intellect. Let your strength come from the Lord, from your relationship with God. Moses gave this same charge to Joshua as he was going to lead the Israelites. He said, be strong and courageous. The Lord himself goes before you in Deuteronomy 31. Even when we don't know what the outcome will be or what we're facing in a situation, our hope and our strength is found in a faithful God. He is a God who will never leave or forsake you. He will always be by your side. When you are still reeling from your parents' divorce, feeling rejected or isolated from friends, or feeling shame over sin, or even depressed, you have to remember that God is with you. He is the one you can always talk to. And He is the one who is always working even when you can't see it. And we are reminded of this when we spend time in His Word. Also, when we're spending time in prayer, and when we are encouraging and getting encouraged by our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether here at Oasis or throughout the week. Now let's look at the next piece of the wisdom David gives to his son Solomon, because I think it's just as important. Because it says, walk in the way of the Lord and keep his commands. How is Solomon to know what all the commands and rules are? He has to be in the word of God. David says, follow these commands that are written in the law of Moses. That is the first five books of the Bible. Especially, David is saying to look at Scripture as your guide. Are you guys looking at Scripture as your guide? Are you turning to the Word instead of your friends? As a king, Solomon would need to know how to handle conflict, treat people, and lead well. It would also be really easy to be tempted to turn away from God. As a rich and powerful man, Solomon could put all of his treasures and hope into money and power. But what we see is that feeling ends up becoming empty and worthless. In fact, Solomon wrote an entire book of the Bible to walk with God Solomon would need to be in Scripture. The scripture would remind him of the truth and his need to rely on God and walk with him. The same is true for us. Scripture leads us to all truth. It leads us to the truth of Jesus Christ. He is the answer to the problem of sin. He is our only hope in a world full of empty promises. There is no thing, no drug, or person that is able to fulfill like Jesus Christ. Amen? David wanted Solomon to know his relationship with God, it, that it would be the most important thing. David says, when you are following and obeying the Lord, you will prosper. And I want to pause right here because this word prosper has been confused with Christianity. I want to know, like, how have you heard this word be used? What do you think it means that you will be prosperous? What does this mean for us as believers? 
So let's just take a moment. You guys can talk with us with your group or you can write down your thoughts. Solomon would thrive in the land as he obeyed God. As Christians, this does not mean that we are guaranteed good health or wealth like the prosperity gospel can proclaim. In fact, often Jesus says that we will experience suffer and even persecution. We will begin to have a desire to give things away and be generous. This leads to a prosperity that is not necessarily on the surface, but is one of the inside of us. That we experience a wonderful fullness and joy in knowing and loving and being obedient to Christ. David's greatest joy was knowing and loving the Lord. And God blessed him in many ways. Check this out in Matthew as we look at who came from the family of the line of David. The book of the genealogy, genealogy, the, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. That's in Matthew 1 through 2, 5 through 6. As you see, there are names that may look familiar and names that are harder to pronounce, as you can tell in my own speech. But what you'll notice is, is that David is mentioned here. This means that Jesus, the Messiah and Savior of the world, came through the family line of David. On the surface, it never looked like David would amount to much. But this just shows how powerfully God can use someone committed to him. David was faithful to God's calling on his life, and God used him as a key part in the story of redemption for everyone. David was known for his incredible love for God and desire to serve him. David encouraged his son to be faithful to God, to trust in his promises, and to obey his commands. David knew that being known as a follower of Christ begins with obeying and having a relationship with Christ. David wanted to put God on display in everything that he did, which is awesome. So the question is, what do you want to be known for? Do you want to be known as someone who loves God and others well, or someone who lives for themselves? David's reputation with others was defined by his faithfulness to God. The fruit of David's life came to the surface. The way he treated people, the way he obeyed God, the way he danced before the Lord, the way he asked for forgiveness showed that he was a deeply devoted follower of Christ. And he made it clear to his son that with everything going on as king, the most important thing 
the most important thing was to spend time with God and obey Him. Are you living your life in such a way that others know you are a follower of Christ? Is He the number one priority in your life? Maybe you are wondering, well, how do I know? Whatever you can't stop thinking about, whatever you put all your time and energy into, that is what your first priority is. And that first priority, whatever you love most will come to the surface of your life. What is the fruit of your life? Are you showing love, joy, peace, and patience? Or are you more often prone to anger and selfishness and pride and lust? Spend time this week thinking about the way you respond. Start to pay attention. When you respond to your parents, do you quickly obey and speak out of love? Do you think of your friends before yourself? Do you blend in and change who you are based on the people you are around? Or do you hold fast to your beliefs? This can be difficult, but we are called to live like Christ, even when it's uncomfortable. He will be known to others by the fruit of your life. What comes to the surface is a reflection of your heart. The beauty of being a Christ follower is that God is the one who changes our hearts and His Spirit works to produce joy, love, peace, and patience. We have to abide. We can't muster this up on our own. We can't do. We have to be. Be in His presence. That comes from developing a relationship with Him and doing what Jesus did. Jesus always spent time with the Father, praying and reading the scriptures, knowing the scriptures. In the same way, we must do the same and let the Spirit transform us into passionate followers of Christ. If you need help or guidance figuring out how to develop, how to develop in your faith and grow, let us know. Your leaders want to help you. We want to help you, lead you, and guide you in your journey with the Lord. If you haven't yet put your faith and trust in Jesus tonight, he loves you and he wants that relationship with you. It is the most important thing you could decide. And if so, talk to one of us. We want to walk you through that. And so as we wrap up this series, there are a lot of moments in our lives that we could define who we are and what we are known for. But ultimately, the only thing that holds eternal value is whether we are known by Christ and by His fruits. So guys, I know that this message uh, is a lot to think about, but my hope and my prayer is that this week you begin to reflect on your relationship with God and that you go deeper with Him. I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you back next week.